Hello guys, welcome back to Money Sense with Miss T. My name is Tendo Jo and I am your financial coach. And on today's episode, we will be talking about money goals, right? Some people um, are even bold enough to call them Vision 2024 or Vision 2030, but yeah, you get where I'm going. So money goals, guys, I want you to get excited about this year. I want you to get excited about achieving your goals. I want you to get excited about smashing the goals. I want you to be full of faith. And I also want you to raise your level of expectation, right? Because Guys, that is basically, you know, an atmosphere where, you know, you can actually feel yourself to work towards achieving your goals when you are expectant, when you are positive, when you're full of faith, when you're just positive, right? So the one thing that I actually also want you to get out of this exercise that we are going to do today is that you know, vision, vision boarding or setting goals and setting, you know, you know, the vision that you want to achieve at the end of, let's say the, 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 the current year or at the end of five years is not just about, you know, the pictures that we are going to put on our vision boards or on our phones. It's not just about that. It's not just about looking at them, but it's also about our habits. It's also about the things that we are doing each and every day so that when the year ends, we can get to a place where we are actually taking the goals off and we are not, you know, complaining and saying that this vision boarding exercise thing doesn't work because it does, you know, lots and lots of people have done it and lots and lots of people have actually seen results. All right. So I'm going to just, yeah, like I said, share a few a few tools using a framework, very easy framework. And I'm hoping that it will get you, you know, in the in the right mind frame um, as you start the year. All right, let's begin. So the framework that we're going to use is something that I learned from, I'm sure it was a business studies textbook or something, and it's called the smart way of setting goals, right? And it's basically an acronym that stands for setting goals that are S for specific, um, measurable, action oriented, um, realistic as well as time bound and i'm just going to go through all of these five um five alphabets to just you know let you in on how to actually you know think through and map these goals out and actually have you know the action behind um, ensuring that we sit at the end of the year and we have smashed our money goals so let's begin with the s for specific it's very important guys for us to be crystal clear about what it is that we want to achieve when it comes to money is it you know getting out of debt is it actually reducing the debt for instance to an acceptable level and a, a level that is acceptable for you is it saving for that holiday is it saving for a deposit for an apartment or for a car so very very clear it needs to be crystal clear you should be able to get onto pinterest you should be able to get onto you know onto google or get onto a magazine and cut these pictures out and you know have a visual representation of what it is that you want to achieve but outside or rather over and above that what you also want to do is you want to pay this picture that um that you have in in front of you that that represents the thing that you want to achieve with a why Whys are very important when it comes to us actually achieving our goals. A compelling vision is so important, guys, or rather a compelling why is very important. So you need to sit back and ask yourself, for instance, if, if my goal is to get out of debt or to reduce my debt to an acceptable level, why is this important for me? Maybe even go to the extent of asking yourself how debt makes you feel. If you look at your debt through the lens of, hmm, if I, if I look at my minimum, uh, my minimum payments that I'm required to make on a monthly basis, right? As a percentage of my income, it's sitting at, you know, more than 50% of my income. How does that make me feel? right? When I look at it, do I actually feel like I'm proud? Do I actually feel like I'm empowered to actually achieve my other goals? Or do I look at it and think, you know what, I need to work on it so that I can re 
allocate this 50% that I'm that 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 I am using to service debt to achieving my other goals like you know investing for my children or investing for myself investing for retirement purposes another example is for instance um let's talk about you know December if you don't know what December is um it's basically um you know festive season it, that's what we have coined it as South Africans uh, it's festive season and I know a lot of people um sometimes or mostly feel like they don't want to they don't want to be left out of you know the night enjoyment you don't want to be left out of the festivities that come with the season and so if you have not planned i know that people go to the point of even you know accessing debt just so that they can look like they're not spectators they can look like they are the part you know they can look the part in making sure that you know this december thing happens for them and if really that is something that bothers you and you want to change that landscape and you want to change how you go about spending december you want to change the fact that you know now you've tapped into debt for instance to make december happen and now january is here and you are stuck and it really really upsets you it really really frustrates you if if really that is something that affects you if if really that is something that makes you feel small or it makes you feel disempowered i want you to write that down right write the why behind why you are going to save why you're going to invest and why you are going to you know put your head down um and and work towards um reducing your debt to an acceptable level or being debt free so being specific is about having a compelling vision and chopping that picture up so that you can look at it and see it every time and visualize yourself as someone who is enjoying their life in in December in reality you know um and the numbers are actually doing the right things okay all right the next word is measurable our goals need to be measurable actually i had missed out um another area that is very important around being specific so over and above you know chopping the picture up and making it clear and um having the compelling why you also need to be specific about how much right how much am i going to save how much am i going to invest how much am i going to put down or rather how much is my debt right and let's just make an example with um a simple number that works um for 12 months 6000 let's just say for instance you want to put aside 6000 for december enjoyment right to go on holiday or to buy your nice clothes or whatever the case is so what you want to do is when it comes to the area of it being measurable what you want to do is to then look at it through the lens of if i if i look at how i go about earning an income right do i earn an income on a monthly basis and if you earn an income on a monthly basis how we then measure the 6000 which looks like a very big goal is we want to then divide it into 12 and then now it looks like it doesn't look like you know that big elephant right it looks like us actually attacking this big elephant one bite at a time so now that 6000 looks like 500 on a monthly basis and that's as actually measuring how we are going to go about working towards achieving the 6000 at the end of the day and then the next one is the a for action oriented and this is where the habit comes this is where the everyday things come or rather the the everyday activities come right and the action here guys is very simple it's something that you actually take you actually decide that you're going to do once you formalize it and i'm hoping that you're going to take advantage of technology to just keep going and it's the simple thing around automating this decision right and i always say if your goal is compelling and you really really want to save you really really want to get out of debt and i do not see this 500 just as an example on your bank statement which is actually a mirror of your priorities then we know that you are just it's just wishful thinking right it's not something that it's not something that you are willing to work on and to achieve and to get to the end of the year and say i have done it i have not only done it because i have prayed i have believed i have been positive but i've done it because i i was actually also putting action behind my work right so very important once you've decided that you're going to put away you know the 500 say in a money market account or in a 32 day account for december spending that you are automating it do the hard work at the beginning automate it so that you don't have to be you know making this decision every single month to put aside this 500 
realistic, right? So our money goals need to be realistic. Very important, guys. Not wishful thinking, but setting goals that are realistic. And the one tool, very simple tool, one of my favorite, you know, money management tools that you can use to assess whether or not this goal of yours is actually realistic or not, right? Is having a budget, guys. A budget will give you a clear view of whether or not this 500 makes sense in the bigger scheme of your income and your expenditure, or it doesn't make sense. But again, if we go back to the why, if we go back to the, spe- the to, 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 to us being specific about this goal, right? If really it's important for you, I promise you, you are going to make sure that you move things around in your budget to make it work, right? To make it actually realistic by either increasing your income or shrinking your expenses to make room for this 500 rand as an example example or the 500 pounds as an example and the last one is t which stands for time bound our goals need to be time bound we're not just setting goals for the sake of setting goals or you know you know how we all say yeah this year i'm getting out of debt or this year i'm saving no at which point like How long is this thing going to take? When are we going to get to a place where we can actually see that we've actually achieved this goal? So it's important, guys, very important to set the deadline. And I always like to make this example around um, getting out of debt or reducing one's debt to a level that's acceptable. So I have a calculator and I did this video a few years ago. I'll actually flag it up here so that you can access it if you are on a journey to actually reducing your debt, your debt, right? And this calculator, what it does is once you've put in your minimum, your minimum payments, you've put in your outstanding balance, you've put in your interest and all of your creditors, right? What it will do is it will calculate when you will actually be debt free, right? And whenever I do this exercise with my clients and the date, right? The debt freedom date that it spits out is something as ridiculous as 2045. My clients are just like, no, not me, not under my watch. I will not be debt free in 2045. But the truth of the matter is if you don't do those exercises like that to, to, to help you see that if you continue servicing your debts just as an example the way that you are you are actually going to get out of debt in 2024 Uh, this deadline this 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 set date actually actually gives you the it, it actually encourages you it actually encourages you to push to an extent that you are actually even able to achieve the the goals even sooner so very important to set deadlines to be clear that i am putting this 500 aside for the next 12 months so that when December comes, I have the money or so that when 2035 comes, I am actually debt free as planned. All right. And guys, if this is your kind of content, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know what some of your financial goals or your money goals are for 2024. And let us work on making sure that we are working on our habits to making sure that we are ticking and smashing those goals. I'll see you next time.